Hey guys, welcome back to Donnie Boy 73 and welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, December 2nd, 2011. It's hard to believe we're in the month of December, one month left and it's the year 2012. Anyways, I'm just going to talk about the Mojack for a little bit, the videos that you saw previously in the week. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed those videos and I must say that it is a good tool to have. Like I mentioned in my videos, there's a homeowner grade of that jack, there's the mid-range and then there's the Mojack Pro like the one I have. Now you can buy a much more inexpensive jack like that if you buy the homeowner grade and the mid-range one. This one that I have, the Mojack Pro, costs around $400 plus shipping and taxes. And here's a better view of it. I must say that if you're a small engine mechanic or landscaper and you do your own maintenance, this is the must-have tool. It saves my time by at least 50% when I sharpen blades on lawn tractors. And in addition to that, you don't have to bust your back while you're doing a job. And here's their info. I like mine so much, I wish I would have bought it sooner. Now the first question I'm going to answer today is in regards to snowblower, specifically the impeller and auger system. A YouTuber is wondering if it's normal that the impeller turns a lot faster than the augers on his snowblower. Well the answer to that is yes. It's normal that the impeller will have many more rotations than the augers do. I've got the front end of a snowblower here just to show you a quick demonstration. Now this pulley here is attached to the impeller and I'm going to turn it. As you can see there's a lot of rotations there. And now notice how slow the augers turn compared to the impeller. I counted how many turns the impeller turns per one turn of the augers and the impeller turns 12 times each time that the augers make one full rotation. So basically that impeller there turned 12 times each time the auger here makes one full complete turn. Now you're probably wondering why it's built like that. It's because the augers don't need to turn that fast, all they do is push the snow in the impeller which then gets blown out through the chute. So you can see it's important that the impeller turns fast because it's very important that the snow can be thrown out properly through the chute. And by being geared like that too it puts less stress on the engine, the engine doesn't need to force as much when you're in deep snow. And you're probably wondering what's the difference between a single stage and a two stage snowblower? Well a single stage snowblower only has the augers at the front and no impeller. You'll find that mostly on older snowblowers, the more modern snowblowers are called two stages because they have the augers and then the impeller as I showed you in this blower here. Now this is a two stage snowblower, if you have an older single stage snowblower you're going to find that the augers will turn much faster and that's because they really need to to be able to throw the snow out the chute. Now my next question, people often email me telling me that they cannot adjust the throttle speed on their snowblower with the Tecumseh engine. The first thing you should check though is all the linkages under this cover here that go to the carburetor and the governor arm. Make sure everything's in good condition and connected where it should be. But the answer I'm going to give you today is in case you've already checked all these things and you're still wondering what's going on. And here's a carburetor from a Tecumseh engine from a snowblower. This is what you need to watch out for today. This is the throttle shaft lever and sometimes what happens is this mechanism over here gets loose from the shaft. So sometimes what will happen is because it's so loose you go to throttle up, this will move but the shaft will hardly move. And it can be something hard to spot because it's hidden under the muffler and one may not think that this could be the problem. So after you've tried everything, your engine still does not throttle up and down properly, check this here and make sure there's no play like on this carb. This part here has to be tight on the shaft here just as this one is. Now if it's loose you're going to need to take the carb apart, take this whole thing off, you can tap it on the back so it's tight or you can just replace the whole shaft with the lever assembly. And the part number for that is 631-776A from Tecumseh. It only costs around $10 and if you do have a problem I do highly recommend that you replace it. Another question I often get in regards to Tecumseh engines on snowblowers, sometimes people will email me telling me that their engine is surging and they do reassure me that they have done everything they can think of to the carburetor, the governor arm and the linkages. Everything looks good they say but it still surges up and down. I'll show you another tip today on the same carburetor that could be causing the surging on your engine. I would highly suggest though that you do the basic things to your carburetor like clean it and put a new carb kit in it before you attempt to do this. Here's the carb again. Sometimes what you need to do is remove the little cap here from this screw 
it's not an adjustable screw it's just a fixed air jet and you need to remove it completely and here's a close view of it it's got a hole over here that you can see through it's got a tiny hole in the center over here but you cannot see through it now you have to make sure that the small hole in the center here is not plugged a good way to check that is to insert a small piece of fuel line just like this just part way down you don't want to go over the holes over here now blow in the fuel line and if you can blow air through it it's okay if you cannot blow air through it you need to unplug it or in some instances just replace the whole screw and because the hole is so tiny what you can do is use a piece of wire from a wire brush and then insert it in the center over here and you should be able to see the wire come in the hole over here and once you can do that it's unplugged and your blower is not going to surge up and down anymore and I'll just reinstall the screw and put it on tight and that's it and don't forget to put the small cap back on the screw and you're only going to find this type of screw on the carburetors with a fixed jet if you have a carburetor that you can adjust it at the bottom here with a screw it's going to be a totally different screw over here if you have a problem with that old carburetor you want to make sure that the o-ring on the screw is in good condition because it can cause your engine not to run properly also I do have a video that shows how to do this procedure on the carburetor needle and I'm going to post a link underneath this video so make sure to check out the full video on that repair in my last question today a youtuber asked me if MTD has a lot of blowers with different brand names on it well the answer to that is yes some will be branded Sears some will be branded Mastercraft it's a company here in Canada some will be branded Yardworks, some will be branded Cub Cadet. And here's an example. This is a Mastercraft Snowblower. It's made by MTD. It's sold at Canadian Tire here in Canada. It's an older model, but all the parts are interchangeable with this older Cub Cadet over here. They're basically the same blowers, just a few features have been changed, like the looks and different things like that. But all the parts, like I said, are interchangeable. And all it is really is just it's branded a different name. So if your blower looks exactly like this, then you know that if you get another one in your shop or that if you need parts for something that you can just interchange the parts and use the same part numbers. It saves you from looking up parts list for each individual model or make. And it's the same thing with other brand names like Murray, AYP, Husqvarna. You'll often see the same blower but branded differently. So that's about all the time I have today before I get back to work in the shop. I want to thank all you guys for watching. I appreciate all your questions, even though I didn't get to all of them. I haven't been feeling too well this week, so it was a bit hard for me to get everything done that I wanted to. And I want to welcome all my new subscribers. And remember, it's always free to subscribe. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.